when I know that when I'm well rested and I'm mm-hmm. eating well, when I step into my classroom, you know, I'm more patient, I'm more fun, right. I'm more energetic, I'm not I'm not dragging my feet picking something up, you know, I'm just more animated in that and I'm giving more of myself to my students, which in turn is hopefully going to get them to be more plugged in to mm-hmm. what we're doing. So I think that as we talk about this a lot too, Matt, as fathers and as husbands and as family members, when I'm feeling my best, I can give my best to my family too, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of trying to maybe without even realizing it, avoid the, what we consider work when we're tired is really just void opportunities to connect with my children, connect with my, my wife and Mm -hmm. that. So, I mean, that this took kind of a physical health and mental health kind of spin to it. But we, and we do touch on that when we present, but confidence too is getting over those insecurities. And Mm -hmm. we always talk about the best way to do that is to experience and to take healthy risks. And I think that's the best part of what we enjoy doing in our presentations is that, as you know, George, we already talked about, we're huge in Mm self-deprecation and having fun. We're not standing up there saying, you know, this is who you need to be us. We're saying we're, we're, we're a little bit of a hot mess and we're learning as we go, (laughs) Right. but we bring people up and put them into strange situations where it's comical funny but in the end they become the stars of the presentation right the show people are laughing people are cheering for them and all of a sudden they get that that energy like holy smokes i just did that in front of 300 strangers and though that was weird and awkward i feel Mm. so empowered right now and then we talk about that was maybe dumb what we had you do that was silly right but there was actually a big point it's when you do try new things and grow a little bit it empowers you and energizes you to do that even more. And then you're more willing to, as you get older, take healthy risks, try new opportunities, put yourself out there, jump on things. And I think that's a more fulfilling life. Yeah. Like one of the, one of the things, uh, and I, like, I really appreciate just sitting down and chatting with you both is I have always encouraged, like some people say like, Hey, I want to do the work that you're doing, George. I'm like, okay, so you got to like blog for like years. You got to, you know, do this, you got to do this. And they're like, no, I just want to get to the po- that, like that point. Right. And I'm still growing. I'm still getting better. And, and what I've seen some people do and is that they're just saying like, here's, I'm the best at this. I, you know, I rule at this, blah, blah, blah. And that to me is kind of pushes people away. And maybe, maybe not, maybe, maybe it's me that it pushes away. What I appreciate about both of you too is, is that, Um, the humility and like I have gone like I hate when anyone refers to me as an expert like oh George is like an expert of innovation like who said that (laughs) I I never said that nobody like you might okay you might think that but where are you getting that from because I no one's ever I I didn't go to expert school I don't have any (laughs) of that stuff right all I'm doing is sharing my learning as I go and I think that's I think this is a message for anybody um, you know, that wants to do the work that you two are doing is that really, it's not about you have to be the the best at something or, you know, we were kind of talking about this before the podcast, like none of us have achieved, like none of us have like Olympic medals unless, you know, maybe you, it's a surprise medal. I don't know about, <laughs> right. No, but it's no, just no, like you, you, no, you, you both, clean, you both have just, record. you both have just shared your learning and people connect with that. Right. And so like, is mm-hmm. it, is that something, you know, that you focused on? Is it, was it just you know, second nature to you? Like, wh- how did it get to that process? Because that to me is like, I, I, I don't need the perfection. I need, I need to see the process. I need to see like where you're at, what you're thinking is how it's changed. And when we first sat down and, and started putting an outline together, uh, the first thing Phil and I spoke about was we have to be transparent and genuine mm-hmm. with our audience about embarrassing or awkward moments that we faced when we were their age, when we were in middle school, we were in high school. So then that's how we really try to kick things off just to build that level of relatability. Like, oh, this guy pitted out at a high school dance. This guy got stood up by a girl. This guy once told, got told that his arms were too puny right. because he ran cross country all those things, but we like to put it out there just so people get a better understanding of who we are and what we're all about. And I mean, we run our speaking company like a mom and pop shop. So Mm -hmm. like when people say to us, how did you guys get started? How do we get there? How do we do it? And we have to remind them, you know, every t-shirt that's designed, every email that's sent, every social media post, it it comes from either Phil or I, and that's, you know, something we take great pride in. 